The Green Climate Fund's Indigenous Peoples Policy recognizes Indigenous peoples as key stakeholders in the climate crisis. The policy supports and promotes the welfare, positive contributions, and leadership of Indigenous peoples to climate change mitigation and adaptation in a manner that is accessible, rights-based, gender-responsive, culturally appropriate, and inclusive. The Indigenous Peoples Policy applies to all prospective and approved GCF finance projects and programs, and this also applies whenever Indigenous Peoples are present or have collective attachment in areas where projects are going to be implemented, which means they have considered presence, cultural or economic ties to certain lands. These lands are geographically distinct habitats, ancestral territories, or areas which they occupy or have seasonal use for. The policy recognizes the unique identity of each group. As such, it applies to communities regardless of how indigenous peoples are referred to in their respective countries. The policy also applies to them regardless of the absence of legal recognition or identification from the state and regardless of the legal status of their territories. The GCF's Indigenous Peoples Policy ensures communities that they have a seat at the table when it comes to adaptation and mitigation projects that greatly impact them. Each project for each community is guided by the right to free prior informed consent, or FPIC. FPIC is an iterative process of requiring consent from Indigenous peoples and conducting consultations with them before any GCF activity is undertaken. These consultations are transparent and inclusive, engaging women and the youth to participate as well. The accredited entities will provide the Indigenous peoples with adequate information in a time-sensitive and culturally sensitive manner, in a language that will be understood by them. As such, accredited entities shall provide a documented evidence that such process of obtaining FPIC has indeed taken place. GCF's IP policy adheres to relevant international human rights standards such as the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the ILO Convention 169 on Indigenous and Tribal Peoples. The policy respects the right of Indigenous Peoples under voluntary isolation to remain so. GCF will respect the prerogative of indigenous peoples living in voluntary isolation or remote groups with limited external contact to remain isolated and to live freely according to their culture. GCF accredited entities should have an indigenous peoples plan or framework this will be done in an inclusive and culturally appropriate manner, with the participation of women and other marginalized groups in the community, such as persons with disabilities. All these will be documented for everyone's reference. Through the IP plan or framework, accredited entities will work with the participating Indigenous communities towards a mutually agreed grievance redress mechanism. This facilitates an accessible, fair, transparent, and constructive resolution of any dispute or grievance arising from the project. This will be implemented in a manner that's culturally appropriate and accessible to the community without retribution to the party that raised the concern. Any existing grievance mechanism in the community will also be respected and recognized, and if possible, utilized. Appeals and mediation for unsatisfied grievances will also be made available. Because of these GCF financed climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts are tailored to meet the needs and priorities of Indigenous peoples. The Indigenous Peoples Policy also provides a guided benefit sharing process that will take into account the indigenous institutions, rules, customs, traditions, and the principle of gender equality in distributing these benefits.
The policy also seeks to identify and address economic, social, or capacity constraints, like gender, age, and disability, which may limit the opportunities from which they can benefit from or participate in. The Green Climate Fund's Indigenous Peoples Policy, guided by international laws and best practices, should also guide governments in developing countries when it comes to strategic frameworks and funding proposals for climate action that will involve multiple stakeholders, including the Indigenous Peoples. The technical and the financial support provided by GCF activities can lay the groundwork or supplement the national policies that require in-depth consultation in order to uphold and fulfill Indigenous peoples' rights, knowledge, culture, heritage, and territories. The GCF, governments, accredited entities, and other actors must ensure the full and effective implementation of the GCF IP policy at all levels. Only then can GCF fully fulfill its mandate, which is not only to avoid doing any harm, but also to do good in promoting climate resiliency among communities.